everyone, for today's lesson, we are going to learn about proofs about lines and angles. There are three parts to this lesson, and we are going to do this lesson over uh, two days, day four and day five, but there are three parts to it. The first part is going to primarily be over adjacent, complementary, and supplementary angles. Part two is going to be primarily over linear pairs and vertical angles. And part three is going to be proving information about these lines and angles. So our I can statement collectively between all three of these parts is I can classify, which the word classify means to put into a category. I can classify or categorize angles as adjacent, complementary, supplementary, linear pair, which hopefully the word linear is very familiar to you, or vertical angles. This one you have to be really careful because some of our vertical angles might not be vertical, so be very careful with those. The second I can statement is I can define a right angle using an if-then statement or language and prove that two right angles are congruent to each other. So this proof that I'm about to, that we'll do at the very end of this lesson is something that we will be working with quite a bit between this unit and the next unit as well. For today's lesson, you're going to need something to write with, scissors, a glue stick or scotch tape, some highlighters, and you are also going to need the, your cutouts for this lesson. So that is a blank sheet of, uh, it's like a square looking shape, the linear pair with another blank rectangle and that blank rectangle, these are going to go inside of one another. You're gonna have a quick example over telling whether angles are vertical, linear pairs or neither. And finally, we have ourselves a proof that we will be conducting at the very end. All right, please go ahead and pause the video, get yourself your materials ready to go, and then go ahead and restart the video. Here we go. So the first thing I would like you guys to please take out is I would like you to please take out the very large square. We're gonna call it a square. And what I would like you guys to please do is please go ahead, I'll, I'll zoom out just a little bit so that you can see what I'm about to show you. All right, I want you to take this square and I want you to go ahead and fold it in half. And then once you have it folded in half, this is where it gets kind of tricky. I want you to fold it in thirds. So kind of like fold it in half and then like fold it inside so that it's like this and then fold it up again so that we have it folded in thirds. So I know that kind of sounds weird, but when you unfold it, you'll have three different tabs. So we folded our paper in half and then we folded it down into thirds. So we kind of want, I know this is kind of like a really weird thing to do. We kind of want to like make it so that it is as even as you can you might have to do some twisting, but you want to fold it in thirds. And then unfold it just one time. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut along the crease, like open up one half and just cut along the crease. So that what we have is this really neat cutout that has these three different tabs. And the first tab is adjacent angles. So I'll go ahead and zoom back in. We're gonna talk about adjacent angles first. Adjacent, A, D, J, A, C, E, N, T, adjacent angles. And what adjacent angles are, is they are two non-overlapping angles who share 
two things. The first thing that they share is a common vertex. And the second thing that they share is a side. And a side of, a, of, a, um, of an angle is a ray. They share a ray. So they have to share both, two things. So I'm gonna put the word and right here. They share both a common vertex, which it's a common corner point, and a common ray. So if we were to look at adjacent angles, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an angle, and then I'm gonna draw a ray coming up the middle. And these two angles, they're not necessarily congruent to each other. And the first angle is this angle. And the second angle is this angle. These two angles are considered adjacent angles because they share a common vertex and they share a common side. So they share a common vertex and they share a common side. And those are considered adjacent angles. Let's go ahead and open up that tab. And inside of the first tab, we're gonna talk about examples of adjacent angles. So adjacent angles would be very similar to the picture that I just drew, if you wouldn't mind redrawing that. We're gonna label this angle, angle one. We'll label this angle over here, angle two. And we're gonna say that angle one and angle two are adjacent angles. They are adjacent angles. So our shorthand for adjacent is ADJ, adjacent angles. So there's one angle and here is the other angle. And they share a common side. They are considered adjacent angles. Another set of adjacent angles would be if you saw a straight line and then an, a ray coming off of it, so a straight angle. So we'll label this angle three and angle four. So here's angle three and angle four. These two angles would be considered adjacent angles. because they share a common vertex and they share a common side. So angle three and angle four are adjacent angles. Non-adjacent. So non-adjacent is another way of saying not adjacent. You have, these are the ones that you have to be very careful of. Non-adjacent angles look like this. We'll call this angle one and angle two. Angle one is located right here and angle two is located right here. These are considered non-adjacent angles and that's because the only thing that they share is they share a common side. But they don't share a common corner. They don't share a common vertex. They each have their own vertex. So therefore, these two angles are not considered adjacent angles. They don't have a common vertex. So they do not share a common vertex. Another angle that you might see would be something that looks like this. Angle three is pointing up. 
Angle four is pointing down. They do not share a common side, but they do share a common point. They share a common vertex. But what they're missing is they do not share a common side. So you have to be really, really careful when it comes to adjacent versus non-adjacent. All right, so those are adjacent angles. The next type of angles is called complementary. Complementary angles. And so what complementary angles is, is that they are two angles. That add to ninety degrees. They are two angles that add to ninety degrees. Complementary angles add to ninety degrees. Complementary angles are allowed to be both adjacent and non adjacent. So here's an example of complementary adjacent angles. What you're going to see is a right angle. You'll see two angles. They will have different angle measures, like this one might be 60 degrees and this one might be 30 degrees. Completely different angle measures, but because 60 degrees plus 30 degrees equals 90 degrees, they are considered complementary because they add to equal 90 degrees. This next side are going to be non-adjacent complementary angles. So complementary angles are allowed to be non-adjacent. They might be com two completely separate angles, like this angle might be 40 degrees and this angle might be 50 degrees. And together this 40 degree angle plus this 50 degree angle, 40 degrees plus 50 degrees equals 90 degrees. Because collectively they add to equal 90 degrees, they are considered non-adjacent, complementary angles. The next one that we have is called supplementary angles. And supplementary angles are two angles that add to 180 degrees. So they add to 180 degrees. Once again, the angles do not have to be adjacent to each other. They can be adjacent or they can be non-adjacent. It just depends. Um, but they're always, as long as those two angles add to 180 degrees, they are considered supplementary. Now, you cannot have like three or four angles add to equal 90 or 180. It has to be specifically two angles. So that is something I want you guys to keep in mind. It's only two angles. So I'm gonna show you really quick um, adjacent or supplementary adjacent angles.
what you're going to see is a straight line. And in that straight line, there will be a, a ray coming out. And you'll have two different sides of that angle. One side will clearly be labeled as one degree and the other one will be a different degree. But together, those two angles add to equal 180 degrees. So you always want to look for a straight line. And what I'm writing right here is 120 degrees plus 60 degrees equals 180 degrees. Now, supplementary angles are allowed to be um, non-adjacent as well. So these are some supplementary non-adjacent angles. And they would look like something like this, where you would have like one angle that would be like 150 degrees and another angle that would be, you know, separated from it that would be 30 degrees. And together, we know that 150 degrees plus 30 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. So they are two angles, two separate angles that are not adjacent to each other and they somehow add to equal 180 degrees. When you are ready, go ahead and paste this on the side of your notebook. So where I'm gonna put it is gonna be on the side because I have some other vocabulary words that I wanna make sure that I write down as well. So that's gonna go right here. This first cutout is considered part one. So out of our lessons, this one is part one. Part two is now talking about linear pairs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what linear pairs are. So if you wouldn't mind taking out the blank rectangle and the definitions for linear pair and vertical angles, what I would like you guys to please do is please go ahead and paste these definitions directly into or onto the, the blank rectangle. Somewhere in the center, do the very best of your ability. And the same, we're going to create the same cutout that we have um, throughout this class where we're just going to cut straight up to the line. And we're going to talk about what a linear pair is. A linear pair, pair, linear. Let's go ahead and talk about those words. Linear, when we were in Algebra 1, we graphed linear functions. Linear is another word for line. So you always want to look for a line. Linear pair, pair means the number two. So two angles that form a line. So a li uh, linear pair are two angles that form a line. Two angles that form a line with each other. They are supplementary and adjacent. So those supplementary adjacent angles have a special name. So when we were working with supplementary angles, these supplementary adjacent angles where we had a straight line, Instead of calling it supplementary adjacent, we are now going to call it a special term, and that special term is called linear pair. And so our linear pair looks like this. I'm going to draw a straight line, and I'm going to draw a ray coming out of that line. And we're going to label this angle one and angle two. And these two angles will probably have different angle measures. Sometimes they have the same angle measure. And when that's the case, you're dealing with right angles. But we'll see that later on in this chapter or in this unit. And what we're going to say is that angle one and angle two are a linear pair. So angle one and angle two, because together they are adjacent and 
They are supplementary because they would add to equal a straight line, add to equal 180. Together, they're called a linear pair. Now, just like I said before, what do you want to look for? You want to look for the straight line hidden in plain sight. I know this looks like a crazy look. Look, L O O K, or the straight line. that is hidden in plain sight. So what I mean by that is a lot of times you're gonna see crazy pictures with lines all over the place. And so what I want you to recognize is that there's two lines in this picture. There's one line where you have two angles that are going to add to equal 180 degrees and then you have another line where the next door neighbors are going to be supplementary the those these angles are going to be uh, supplementary to each other always look for the the line in plain sight always keep that in mind next we have vertical angles and vertical angles don't necessarily have to be vertical. They are essentially two angles that are opposite. So two angles that are opposite of one another at the intersection of two lines. These angles are congruent angles. Vertical angles are congruent to each other. Always congruent. So if I were to draw two straight lines, Vertical angles are not always vertical. They are essentially angles where there are two straight lines. They have to be straight lines and they are congruent to each other. So like this angle is congruent to this angle. We'll call it angle one is congruent to angle two. But there exists another set of, of vertical angles. They are angle three and angle four. These two angles, if I flipped it upside down, they're now considered vertical angles. So they, they share a common vertex and they are created by two lines intersecting each other. So we would say angle three is congruent to angle four and they are considered vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent to each other they will have the same angle measure. So we're gonna say that angle one and angle two are vertical angles. So that's our shorthand. We would also say angle three and angle four are vertical angles. There's going to be a lot of shorthand in this unit that I want you guys to be aware of. Also, look right here. We had um, a, we have a very similar picture to what we just drew right down here for vertical angles. So in pictures like these, there will be vertical angles that are congruent and then linear pairs. So there'll be linear pairs throughout and there's going to be vertical angles throughout. So the pictures are going to look very similar but you have to know what you're looking for. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fold in our tabs. This was linear pair. And we had vertical angles. Now, when it comes to the language that you would use in proofs, 
hopefully you gave yourself a little bit of space. And down here, the language that you're going to use in proof writing will be as follows. You might say, if two angles add to 90 degrees, then they are complementary angles. You might see if two angles add to 180 degrees, then they are supplementary angles. You might see the word sup. Sup means supplementary. So that might be a language that you might see in proof. So that is one, these are two statements. Another statement that you might see is if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. That's an if-then statement you might see in proofs. And finally, if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. So these are the statements that you're going to see in proof writing um, because we are going to be using these definitions, using them whenever we write our proofs. So I want you guys just to be aware of that. All right, let's go ahead. Now that we've talked about our definitions, we're going to do a really quick example before hopping into a proof. And that example on the next page is going to be um, to tell whether the angles are... Um, a linear pair, vertical, or neither. And now that I'm looking at my picture, I could see that you can't see the picture. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw it in for you guys. So I have these two, I have a line. I have one, uh, we're gonna call it a ray going in one direction. And I have another ray going in a different direction. And the angles are labeled like this. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So if you wouldn't mind going and pausing the video and drawing this figure, that will help you guys. So what we wanna do is we wanna tell whether the angles are vertical, linear, pair, or neither. So if you would like to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can answer these questions on your own, and then go ahead and restart the video and we'll see how well you did. Right, let's go ahead and look at number, letter A. For letter A, we have angle one and angle two. Angle one and angle two, they are a linear pair. And they are a linear pair because they form a line. They form a line together. Angle one and angle three, they share a common vertex, intersect or created where two lines intersect. They are considered vertical angles. Angle one and angle four, together they form a line. They are considered a linear pair. Angle four and angle five, they have nothing in common with each other. They just share a side, but they're not even uh, considered adjacent angles. So they are what we call neithers. They do not have a relationship. Angle four and angle two, this is the trickier one. These are considered vertical angles. And the reason why they're considered vertical angles is because they share a common vertex and they're created by two lines intersecting each other. They are directly across from each other. And if I were to flip this picture upside down, they would officially become vertical. 
So these are vertical angles and they are congruent to each other. Five and eight, they share nothing really in common. So they are considered neithers. Angle five and angle seven, once again, they have nothing in common. So that's considered neither. And five and six together, they form a line. So they're considered a linear pair. And remember that linear pairs, they are supplementary. They should add to equal 180 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this directly into my notebook. We have one proof left and then we are done with this lesson. So we know, we've worked a lot with um, right angles over the years. We've learned about right triangles. We've learned um, that whenever we see the box, we're talking about an angle measure is equal to 90 degrees. And what we're going to do now is we are going to prove that two, if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. And we're going to be using this language, not just in this proof, but in other proofs throughout this core uh, throughout the next couple of units. So remember in proof writing, I give you all of the boxes down below. So that is automatically going to be given to you. What we need to do is an analyze what's going on in this problem. And I was I am told that angle K is a right angle and angle L is a right angle. And I want to prove that angle K is congruent to angle L. So I always start off with writing down my given, which is angle K is a right angle. And angle L is a right angle. And I always write that down because it is given. And it looks like that is my first statement that I have right here. So now look at what we have right here. We have angle K is equal to 90 degrees and angle, a measure of angle uh, L is equal to 90 degrees. What came before and what comes next? What came before is we're talking about right angles. What came next was the 90 degrees. Whenever you're writing your if then statements, it's all about what came before and what comes next. What came before, that's the if. What comes next is the then. If an angle is a right angle, then its measure is 90 degrees. What came before is right angle. What came next was 90 degrees. That's how you can decide what you should write down next. So I'm going to write if an angle is a right angle, then its measure is 90 degrees. So it's all about what came before and what comes next. Next, because the measure of angle K equals 90 degrees and the measure of angle L equals 90 degrees, they both equal 90 degrees. Remember when, I, when we were talking about transitive property of, congru uh, of equality, they both have something in common. And in this case, both of these angles have in common a 90 degree angle. Therefore, we can say the measure of angle K is equal to the measure of angle L. So it's all about what came before and what's coming next. If the measure of angle K equals 90 and the measure of angle L equals 90, then the measure of angle K equals the measure of angle L equals transitive property of equality. Now, look at what came before and what's coming next. We're going from the measure of angle K equals the measure of angle L to suddenly angle K is congruent to angle L. Equals to congruent. If two angles are equal in measure, then they are congruent. It's all about what came before and what's coming next. If two angles are equal in measure, then they are congruent. And that is the end of our proof.
If you have any questions over anything that I talked about in this lesson, please feel free to email me. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.